Welcome back, Life in a Wine Bottle fans. This is part two. Our topic was Ramona Wine Region, and we'll discuss the climate, soil, and the different vines that are grown here in this area. Enjoy the episode. You have a winery in Ramona? Mm -hmm. They're going to say, where is that at? Oh, yeah. And then you say, well, it's in San Diego. And then they usually say Temecula. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I yeah. said, well, we're not. And oh, they'll say, you live so far. You live in. No, no, no. We are actually, yeah. like I said, 35 miles away from downtown San Diego. Mm -hmm. It probably takes from downtown, I'll say, almost an hour, 45 minutes, depending on traffic. Um, but in like the Del Mar area, you're getting here in 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, you're actually more on the uh, east end. Yep, yep. Okay. We are considered to be a desert. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to get a different soil here in this area. And it gets hot here. It gets pretty warm. But I always like to tell people just the uniqueness of it, right? Mm -hmm. the, behind Ramona, it's not so much that just the grounds or the vines getting planted here. But we get temperatures up to 100 plus. And then that evening it goes down the 50s. You know, how high are we here? In, so in right area? here, we're at 2,200 feet. Okay, so Vineyard Grand James is at 2,200 feet elevation. Castelli Family Vineyards is at 1,600. Mm -hmm. Do you get snow here? Uh, we'll get flurries. Okay, but nothing sticky. Nothing that sticks. Yeah, but pretty fun. Every few years. Yeah, but pretty fun, fun that you can see that. Yeah, and, and this yeah. is San Diego, everybody. Just want yeah, to let you yeah, know. Yeah. Okay, we get we get, and then you get down to when when it gets to winter time, you get down to thirties. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so it gets cold here too. So you get a bit influx. I was reading in, and if anybody knows about the microclimates, they say there's thirteen. Yeah, you know, if it's thirteen yeah. or fourteen, yeah. roughly around there. And my, I'm about from their vineyard to our vineyard. We're about I I think it said nineteen miles. Okay. We're completely different. Mm -hmm. The microclimate is completely different here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I like people to understand that because I think that's one of the, the, a great story to share. Yeah. You know, this Sangiovese back here, you have, I have Sangiovese over there in our property and it'll taste different. Yep. You know, but yeah. it's literally less than 30 miles away, mm -hmm. you know, within a, a, a nice little um, environment here. But the microclimates are completely different. Yeah. And you know? so, Ramona is large, so, and for example, like we're in a valley, right? So we get a constant uh, breeze through here, which the grapes like. Mm -hmm. uh, two lot, breezes, two actually, breezes. Just, just to let them know, because yeah. uh, we get the ocean breeze, yep. which really, it isn't too far, but we get it all the time, like right now. And then we get what what's called the Santa Ana breeze, mm -hmm. which is hot. Yep. It's super hot, and it's blowing from the desert, the east to the west. So we get two different, so it's a little bit different than typical mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, regions, right? Yep. So sorry for cutting off, but go ahead. Oh, we'll, no, no, no. Just so, add in there. Um, most successful um, wine regions is you want to be near a large body of water that temperates the climate mm -hmm. by large body and ocean. But it helps if you're a certain distance. So we're, there's kind of a zone, a coveted 13 to 19 miles uh, from the ocean. Sweet spot. Yep. Basically so, the sweet spot. Yep. And then, so you want to be uh, more of a temperate climate, kind of a Mediterranean, although they're now growing grapes everywhere mm -hmm. and they grow great grapes where it snows, yeah. uh, different varietals. And also that temperature swing that you talked about. So that diurnal shift. So we have about a 40 degree diurnal shift. So between the day and nighttime temperatures. And that's good because during the day, the grapes need to be hot, lots of sugar. But just like a person at night, it's like, oh, I need to cool off and go need to sleep. need to rest, yes. I need to rest. You build the energy. Yep, and the evaporation know, from all the, the water and, 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 relax and, and rest and kind of recuperate from that heat of the day. Mm -hmm. So that also helps. And then for us, that breeze helps mitigate uh, the powdery mildew, um, lots and lots of sunshine. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, and I, well, I always like to share that because whenever you, you get bottles of wine, these are the stories that people come back with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They always yeah. like to know why. Why yeah. is it so different? Yeah. It's just wine, yeah. right? It's just yeah. grapes over here. Yeah. You know, this is going to be a little trick question. Mm -hmm. Do you know 
is there a certain amount of varietals grown here than others? Like, is there, let's just say, more Sangiovese than There's, anything uh, else, what do you say? a lot of Sangiovese mm -hmm. being grown. But a lot of people planted grapes that they felt that they could sell, right, that mm -hmm. they were comfortable with or that they knew, like Cabernet or Chardonnay or Merlot. But there's also a ton of experimentation going on out here. Uh, so like myself, I'm growing Toraldigo, Negro Maro. Oh, nice. People are doing Nero de Avalo. Um, and I to, guarantee you yeah. these are names that a lot of a lot of wine lovers don't even know about. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yep. Drought tolerant, heat resistant, uh, southern Italy. Uh, we've got a lot of similarities in climate. Now with climate change, uh, even our grape growing has changed in the last 11 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we're giving them, um, so it's getting hotter, it's getting hotter quicker, and it's staying hotter longer. So we're actually doing more shade cover. So we're doing less hedging. When I first started, yep. there was a lot of hedging. Now it's like, no, no, don't hedge. Uh, give them some shade, uh, maybe more water, water before a heat spike. Mm -hmm. And and when she refers to hedging, it's more of um, again the of hair reference because mm -hmm. I feel like every almost everybody knows a little <laughs> bit about a hair. I'm not gonna say everybody yeah. has hair, yeah. but everybody knows a little bit. So instead of having spiky hair, you yeah. kind of have hair that you can kind of comb over to the side. Yeah. So or, that's basically yeah. what's going on. Or that is like a hedge, but it's topped off at the top. It's yep. like you've let the it's, hedge. Like kind of flop Hanging over, over and give us a little bit of shade. Yes, to so give a little shade because of the heat. Yep. All right. Yep. So yeah, I always like to say that. So here, how, what type of varietals do you have here? Besides so the ones that you just I've got the Sangiovese, and then in terms of white, I'm growing Albarino and Viognier and Marsan, mm -hmm. and then I also purchase grapes from uh, local growers, so that because uh, I like blending wine, and in addition to doing single varietals. Oh, nice. So it's quite a few. And how much? How many vineyard? Uh, how many vines do you have here? So, so have we've got um, thirty-five hundred vines, okay. and um, so I'll do about um, seventeen to twenty tons every year. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. A, a lot, especially since I'm not making it in the barn. Yeah, it's um, and we're still considered boutique. Yes. yes okay, yes, so we're yeah. very. Yep, under five thousand cases. Yes, yeah. under five thousand. And I was just talking to um, I, ha I have another podcast which is coming out with the wine blogger, uh, top wine blogger actually, and she was telling me that one of her favorite regions is Italy, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and she's just worried about what's going on because of all the COVID, mm -hmm. and that's their livelihood right there. Yes. And that's it. They, they they don't do anything else. There's no other side hustle or side jobs. Mm -hmm. From family to family, they're passing down these little vineyards that are doing less than 5,000 cases. And they don't know what to do. They're struggling like everybody yeah. else. So um, so remember, the big wineries are doing, what is it, 500,000 cases? Is that what a big winery is considered? Something like that. And then medium yeah. size is like 250 cases. So we're very, you know, we're a little speckled. Yes. But yes, yes, yeah. with so many wineries here, like a, nana, become, a nana winery. Yeah, we're, 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 you know, there's so many wineries here, we're becoming a little bit bigger than yeah, what, yeah. what we're thinking. You, we, you've been doing this for 11 years. Mm -hmm. What do you think the next 10 years are going to come from Ramona? I think it's going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So we As had... in vineyards, wineries, or cells? Uh, I think all of them. I okay, think all, all three. Of them. Uh, we've. We have this map that we periodically update, and I'm amazed at the new wineries that open up. Or I'll look at the membership. <laughs> but wait, what, why are you? Uh, why are you? Uh, you're amazed because you're saying they're crazy to put a vineyard, or, or you're amazed you're because like, oh, you're happy? There's another one this month. Oh, okay. there's another new winery. So <laughs> it's it's interesting how many new wineries are open. So right, I think of that. Uh, can continue to plant more grapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think yeah, then the sales will increase. People will know about it and. And ho hopefully we can feed, like you said, the, uh, the I, I don't know if I want to say fire, but we're feeding the restaurant side, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. hopefully we can produce as much as we can for the price point that it's fair for everybody. Yeah. And from there, you get that constant back and forth from customers coming up and doing a day visit mm -hmm. and just enjoying themselves up here and then coming back down the hill, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, it too is... Also, is Ramon is evolving. So, if to have a wine region, you need food. Yeah. So, right, you got a food scene, restaurants. Yeah. 
you need the hotels, right? They want to make a weekend out of it, so you get to the hotel. And, and then an additional entertainment factor. They want to know that there's other things in, in town to do. Right. So all of those components need to grow. Yeah, it's just not one, right? Mm -hmm. It's not one winery getting big. Yep. Everybody yep. has to go together and grow together as a yep. team. Yep. You know. Okay, so we move scenes again. I hope you can <laughs> see the, the background there with the mountains. You can see a little bit of the vineyard. Um, and just this is just a cool setting. It's really a nice place to hang out. Um, Stress-free, yeah. I would say. Uh, not, I've been in some wineries that I feel like it's more of how many people come through. Mm -hmm. um, and one reason why is because they're very busy. And they just, you know, that's just their, their model, I guess. Mm -hmm. They really don't want to do it that way, but they're there just pouring wine as quick as they can and they get a new set of faces coming through. For us, we don't have that luxury mm -hmm. yet. But we, I, as for, for myself, I hope that we stay in that realm of giving back to the guest and really talking with them. Mm -hmm. You know, really, mm -hmm. you know, I always try to be at the winery. My in-laws are always trying to be at the mm -hmm. winery. My wife is always at the winery. My kids are running around. So we want to give that um, family feel, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I know you guys do it because I always get, uh, I know Barb. Yeah, Barbara, yeah, Barb. yeah, yeah, she's really great. I see her at other events, so she's um, I, I can see she really cares, yeah, for the guests, and I think that's that's a big thing in any business. Yes, you it know, is. you really have to care for what you're doing, and and care for you know your guests. I mean, at the end of the day, they're they're the ones that are going to be buying the bottles. Yep, yeah, you know, and they have the experience and remember the experience, and mm -hmm. so it's real. I think that's a special part that yep. you're coming into in Ramona. You're coming into somebody's house. Mm-hmm. Really, and I didn't really touch too much into that, but mostly everybody, a lot of them are ex-engineers, um, semi-retired, and they say, hey, I have land, I live in Ramona, mm -hmm. let me plant a vineyard, and then from there, they literally are making wine in their garage mm -hmm. until they can mm -hmm. kind of open another little facility, yeah, a little, yeah, you know, yeah. and so yourself, you have your place here. Mm -hmm. Then you have a, an aluminum building, aluminum building. How big is your aluminum building over there? Uh, 2000 square feet. Okay. So, yeah. Is that all the winemaking process? Yeah, in there? it is. Okay. Man. With barrels, in yeah, <laughs> bottles. And you think you have a lot of space, yeah, but right? You don't. It's Every packed, time it's you packed. think you, you're like, Oh, this is a great space. Then you start putting some barrels. Yeah. You put a little bit of bottles. And then all of a sudden, it happens again next year. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. you add a little bit more. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I got to take everything out just to get to where I yes. want to get to, right? Yeah, we spent a lot of time forklifting yes. stuff in and out. Reorganizing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that never changed. And we we're just talking, uh, when we switched, we we're just talking about the cleaning in Ramona. Yes. Because yes. we're, <laughs> we're, there's a lot of dirt here, uh, even though it's green. But it's just dirty. It's, yeah, you're just, just outdoor. You're you know? on a farm, yep. and, right? And you're in an agricultural community, so there's just a lot of dust. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're we're just, just joking about how we're always dusting. Stuff. Yeah, she was just <laughs> saying, she was looking around, she's like, well, I gotta oh, dust a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was just telling her that why making, I think it's, you'll probably why make for 10% of the time and clean for 90%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you're always, always clean, clean always the macro bins. You're always clean the, the stem, right? You're always cleaning the barrels, the tank, equipment. the stainless steel, uh, just a floor. Yeah. You, oh, so yeah. it doesn't stop there. Um, I wanted to ask about, um, do you happen to know the pricing with bottles? So I wanted to go into, so, so when guests come out here, they don't get price shocked or um, they kind of have a sense of what they're going for. Okay. Do you know, is there a range that you, you've been seeing in Ramona? Uh, say the range um that i see is maybe 25 to 42 dollars is, okay. is the range that i see yeah and that's a pretty good i mean for being homemade hand-picked um wine from very small vineyards i don't think you can ask for anything better than that mm -hmm. i mean that's really yeah. the, co and, the cost of, of yeah. producing that bottle yeah and, and also the um, the quantity mm -hmm. You know, you're probably getting maybe a barrel to three barrels, mm -hmm. you know, and a barrel holds 300 bottles. So, yes, it seems like a lot. But if I gave you a barrel, you can drink a bottle one per day, you know. <laughs> so if you think about it, so it goes pretty quick. 
So it it's very small, it's, you know. So if you really think, and then usually you're not drinking by yourself. Yeah. You have yeah, somebody with yeah. you. You have uh, you bring it out to a, uh, a friend's house or social settings. Uh huh. And there's multiple oh, yeah. people, so that's five glasses. You know, five yeah. people, and that's yeah. it. You yeah. get your bottle, so <laughs> it goes by pretty quick. You know, what about tastings? Have you seen anything? Um, any tastings going on with the uh, uh, pricing? There is it twenty dollars a tasting or ten dollars? Is there any? range there have yeah you they're usually ten dollars i know we uh waive the tasting fee if you purchase a bottle okay. um i think some wineries have split it up if you get more tasting or maybe they've got library wines that you can taste and i think maybe then it's fifteen dollars yeah. so that's usually the price that i see yeah. and ramona do you know how many awards have been won with some of the winemakers you know, I don't, I don't know. Like is there a, a number? I bet there is, but okay. I don't know off the top of my head what the tally is thing since 2013. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's a tally somewhere. And uh, there are a lot of, I don't know if people entered as many contests this year. I didn't. This is a little weird. weird. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. And everything's yeah, postponed. Postponed. Yeah. And the big part of why you would enter a contest is you award, so you marketing and mm -hmm. A lot of marketing departments aren't going or people are like well i don't know am i going to even be open to sell it so i'm not sure about the contest this year but in the past uh ramona's done really well in yeah. in, in the winemaking contest yeah i'm bringing that up because i i will say and these aren't just local wine competitions no, no, this is our national like finger national yes wine. um san francisco chronicles mm -hmm. Uh, Finger Lakes competition, I uh, think it's like Orange the Orange County Sunset Magazine. Yeah. And, so yeah. uh, I'm bringing that to so people understand that the it is small. We're not as known yet, but they're winning big awards, different winemakers and different within Ramona. Yeah, and the grapes. Yep. It's not just getting grapes, and they're not importing grapes from uh, Napa, and you know, just using. No, they're actually most of them are winning awards within San Diego County mm -hmm. from the growers from here. So obviously I'm, ch I'm promoting showcasing this mm -hmm. area yeah. because um, I think we're, this is just another hot spot that guests can come to. Yes. You know, yeah. and what's better to come to a, a sunny area, San Diego with beautiful beaches, a uh, great downtown area, gas lamp. You can bring your family and most wineries, you know, they're dog friendly, yeah. most wineries. And they allow you to bring your own food. You yeah, bring you, picnic, you can bring, you and... can make a little picnic. Mm -hmm. So I, I really want to cater that part that um, you're missing out if you haven't tried it yet, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And then from there, after you try it, then you can decide whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But hope that, you know, the guests and listeners can hear um, how special Ramona is mm -hmm. within this area. And it's not only that we have cool places to be in because it's from people's homes but also the wine is good yeah because a judge basically certified it being good yeah. you know <laughs> right and the judge but there's a lot of um psalms in san diego mm -hmm. and uh it's a big they, food scene here. it's a big food scene i mean this is a huge they, food scene. they like there's a big uh convention where all the psalms come from all over the u.s all over the world and uh, they're tasting San Diego wines and talking about them. And... So, so the word is getting out there, spreading mm -hmm. out. So you better get here fast before <laughs> we don't we run out of wine, everybody. <laughs> oh, so what about? Let's see. For so for for customers, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like um, I guess a selling point. You you're you're overseeing the RVVA right now as a president. How would you recommend like a new time customer? How so when listeners are hearing us, what will you have them say? Would they go to the RVVA website? Mm -hmm. Would you have them go to Instagram? How would you have them pick wineries? What what will you recommend? Is there any procedures that you yeah, see there? So on the RVVA website, you can actually sort it out by wine. Like I like white wine or I like Italian varietals. You can um, kind of pick a point on the map. You go to some wineries, you ask them, hey, who around here do you like? And the winemaker or the tasting room manager will tell, give you a recommendation. Or you're like, I kind of like these wines. And if you don't, you're like, I'm looking for a certain kind of experience or a certain um, view or I want food. Well, you know, you got some other criteria when you're out wine tasting. Yeah. And then the um, website is mm -hmm. rvva.org. 
and make sure you follow them because they have they post some great stuff yeah. and you can see all the uh, latest articles and yeah, awards and award and specials yep you know yep. there's specials and just outdoor just just kind of view it so you can have a a, a sense of where they're at and what they're doing mm -hmm. so make sure for so first time guests if you're planning a trip to san diego check out the website it's easy and like you said you can go by varietal a lot of people just like pinot yep right yep. a lot of people just like uh, san jay san Gervaisi, or they like a petite straw mm -hmm. or they like a petite straw that won awards mm -hmm. you know so you have those options to play around with so hopefully we're, we're catering to the audience that's a little bit easier not mm -hmm. so much work i know it's a fun process to pick out wineries but it's a little bit easier and then you can kind of choose from there from yep, where you get yep, to. Yep. So I, I love the, the response there. So do you have a wine collection? Uh, we drink it. So okay. No. <laughs> so no wine collection. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, like everybody that we interface with, right? We start talking about mm -hmm. wine or right or foods. Like we're always cooking something and you're like, Oh, well, I guess this great bottle I've got. Mm -hmm. So then we bring out our great bottle. So we're always drinking it. Um, <laughs> But what's kind of fun for us, so my son is at Gallo now, okay. and Gallo, they got a, a, a list that staff can choose. I think they get a staff price. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of fun. So Grant has this this list, and so we, we pick stuff. And so that that's kind of like where, where I've been getting my, all my wine. Oh, so, so tasting yeah, and seeing tasting, what they're doing. And you know what? And Gallo has a lot of top shelf items. And so it's they're, big. they're big. They're big. They're big. And actually, I'm going to have an interview with a Gallo representative that's in the San Diego area. Oh, cool. That he sells through the Walmarts, and um, I think he just told me he got Sprouts. A great guy. So we're going to pick his brain, so that's going to be probably next month that you're oh, going to be. Oh, that'll be fun. So, you know, you can hear that one for, you know, the preview, I guess yeah, I would say, for yeah, that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no collection. So what about... Or we drank it all. Okay. Yeah, the collection <laughs> was already drank, so you can't, it's already gone, so it's that good. Uh, what about anybody to the wine scene? Would what, what would you recommend them tasting first? Was there anything, and I'll, let's just say from your vineyard. What would you recommend? Um, that they taste here. We've got a, uh, for in terms of white wine, um, a Sauve Blanc and a Viognier that have been uh, really popular, well received. I've got some single varietals that I think are really indicative of Ramona, uh, a Tempranillo, an estate Tempranillo that we have. I made a rosé a rose out of Negro Maro. Oh, that nice. was really good. And oh, nice. So you got a couple of good options for newcomer wine tasters. Uh, you have the whites and you have the reds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're able to do a little bit of both. So mm -hmm. don't worry. So don't worry about if you only taste whites. Yeah. Because it, it's a little challenging here to grow whites. Yeah. But we're getting better at it. Um, and we're also, whites take, they take different chemistry and they take more equipment. Uh, yes. Which the wineries are starting to do and invest in and purchase. And... Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a timeline. It's a, mm -hmm. yes. it's a section of our life that we're trying to grow to, yeah, to, yeah, to develop. Yeah. But we're going first with what we know, the reds, yeah. and then we're starting to. Yeah, uh, I'll branch out. So I have a little game here, and I tell everybody. Uh, so my little game, I didn't tell you about this. So oh, we do okay. a little questionnaire, okay. Okay. but my little game is called the uh, spit wine game. Oh, okay. You have five seconds to answer one question. Okay. Okay, and it is related to wine. Okay. It's only five questions. Okay. Real simple, just fun, just so guests know what you like, and or listeners and viewers know what you like, and. And about the winery, you know, in general, uh -huh. uh, what, what's a good bottle from the winery. So you got five seconds. Okay. And I'm going to just real quick. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Yeah, here's yeah. a spit wine game. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Red or white? Uh, red. All right. Uh, is there a favorite varietal? Um, I really like the Negro Amaro. Negro Amaro. Favorite bottle you made? Uh, Viognier. Viognier. Which wine region would you go besides Ramona? Because that's obvious. In the I, my husband and I really like uh, France. France? Yeah. Okay. Bordeaux. But the one we go to a lot, we really like, is uh, Valle de Guadalupe. Down in oh, Mexico. nice. Yeah. Down in Mexico. It's about an hour. Mm -hmm. From here, it's about mm -hmm. two hours. Mm -hmm. But off the border, it's probably 50 minutes. Yeah. And they're getting big into and the Guadalupe food Valley. Scene there. Yeah, some good food down mm -hmm. there. The last question is, last bottle you opened? 
Oh, uh, from my uh, personal wine distributor from Gallo. Oh, okay. So what was I it? had gone on Iconic Winemakers, okay. and it's uh, Amarone. I mean, uh -huh. Amarone. Yeah. So I never buy it because it's like always like the ones I see are like seventy five or a hundred dollars. Yeah. I wasn't sure. It's not. It's not a quick. No, uh, and I buy knew there. it was from dried raisin, so I thought it was more like a sauterne, uh -huh. more syrupy or raisiny. Yeah. Oh, like a port God. maybe. No, oh, not, not at all. That? It's oh. like, well, maybe you would drink it after dinner, but like a soft Pinot, if then it had a raisin flavor infused. Oh, really? I was like, oh, this is good. Like I took little pictures and sent them. So, <laughs> yeah. And then oh, I good. think a William Hill. So anyway, uh, all of, again, the cool things that so, Gallo's so making. That, Gallo. right? Yeah. I got my little, my little, my little gal. I got this little Gallo coming in through my house now. Nice. That's yeah. great. Yet, yeah, and so that's the end of the game, but I always like to add, so the last part of um, like wine tasting is that you have to, at least for us, uh, we always like to taste from outside this region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. you get stuck of, you will get, you're going to get biased. Mm -hmm. You know, say, so oh, this so is the best too. bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it could be a good bottle of wine. Yes. But you need to match it up with other bottles. Yes. You know, and that's so much as saying, oh, this and, you know, this has the same color and this has, no, it's more of, uh, they made a petit straw. Let's see what other regions are making, yep. how it's tasting, you know, is it drier, is it a little bit sweeter, is, you know, whatever they're trying to do mm -hmm. to create the wines. So it's always good to test different wines yep. everywhere else. So, well, that's about it with the podcast, YouTube channel. Uh, we're at here, Vineyard Grand James. Make sure you follow them on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe to their newsletter. Um, do you have any specials going out within the um, next two months or so? Yeah, we've got a half case and a case special. So okay, we'll half case and a mm -hmm. case special. So yep. when you get here or just online, online, you can order. Make sure you check that out. Um, so this is Life in a Wine Bottle. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, subscribe, podcasting. All that good stuff in Spotify and iTunes at Life in a Wine Bottle. And that's the end of the topic, wine region in Ramona, the RVV. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you.